Hi there, my name is Renee Hobbs, and uh, welcome to 16 Propaganda. Today is uh, Wednesday, January 25th, 2017, and I'm here with the amazing student for Tom 416. And um, this is our first synchronous class. We're using a technology, a very interesting video conferencing technology called Zoom. And so I'd like to Absolutely, everybody in the class uh, to introduce yourself, um, and that will help us figure out. So I'm using the gap to see. Who's and if you're not speaking, it might be good for you to mute your microphone. That'll make the quality of the sound uh, really easy. So I'm going to go first. My name is Renee Hobbs. I'm the instructor for this course. Uh, I've been waiting for seven years to teach this class um, because in 2010 I had the great opportunity to be a consultant to the United States Holocaust Memorial Museum on an exhibit called The State of Deception, The Power of Nazi Propaganda. And over the last seven years I've been consulting to the Holocaust Museum on this special exhibit and thinking a lot about contemporary propaganda, propaganda that we experience through our social media and in our daily life on our Facebook, on our Instagram. And I, as a part of my experience working as a consultant for the Holocaust Museum, I got to make some amazing digital media interactives trying to make a connection between the past, present, and future of propaganda. So in a way you could say I've been waiting about seven years to teach this class and now you're finally here. So I'm really excited and really glad. Glad you're here and glad you decided to enroll in this class. Okay. So let's go around the room. Uh, basically, I'd like you to give your name, rank, and serial number, and then tell me a little bit about why you chose this course. It's elective course on propaganda. Who wants to go first? I'll go. Thanks. Okay. Um, hi, my name is Francesca. Um, I'm a senior studying communications, um, and I took this course because well especially at this time um, just I think propaganda is really fascinating and like how it's been used over history and the government and I love conspiracy theories and stuff and I think it like goes together cool yeah we're gonna spend one whole week on Alex Jones probably one of your favorite conspiracy theorists um, cool yeah so conspiracy theories yep we're gonna talk about it nice Like to next. I can go next. Thanks. Um, hi, I'm Erin. I'm a junior. I'm studying elementary education and communications. Um, and I took this class because it's something a little bit different than what I would usually choose. So I thought it would be a nice challenge and maybe just broaden my horizons to a different topic. I'm really glad you're uh, interested in this. Um, I'm really glad you're interested in this class because, of course, one of my motivations is for uh, helping uh, elementary and secondary teachers figure out how to do about propaganda. So oh, nice. Perfect. A special interest of mine. So I'm glad you're here. Okay, who's going to introduce themselves next? I can go. Thanks. Um, my name's Maddie. I'm a senior. I'm also a double major in elementary ed and communication studies. And I guess I picked this class um, just like, I think Erin, was it? Um, I don't know, I think COM is like really interesting and you can do a lot with it and it can make you really um, well-rounded and this is just something like out of the ordinary. I don't really know a lot about it, so I think it'll be interesting. We're so glad you, to you decided to enroll in the class. Thank you. Yeah. We're introducing ourselves and talking a little bit about your interest in propaganda and why you took this, why you decided to take this class. I can go next. Thanks. Had, um, I'm Shannon. I'm a senior. I'm double majoring in communications and Spanish. Um, I took the class for kind of the same reasons. It looked pretty interesting. And I think it's interesting how um, the use of like propaganda um, can make you think a certain way without you even realizing it. Mm. What a nice way to put it. That's exactly right. Propaganda can get you to think a certain way without you even knowing it. So a big part of our job is going to be to increase our awareness of how, how we encounter propaganda in our everyday lives. 
Who's next? I can go with this. I tested it earlier. I couldn't hear myself. Are you guys able to hear me though? Okay. okay. Um, my name is Mara Melodosian. Um, I'm a junior and a half ish. I'm at the uh, take class at the Providence campus and online. Um, I work full time. Uh, so I took this class for two big reasons. Uh, one, I had taken a few classes uh, on rhetoric and I found them really interesting. I, I wanted to sort of follow that vein. Um, I'm a communications major and business minor and um, one of the big takeaways that I you know was able to learn from my rhetoric courses was that there's a lot of uh, different meaning to you know rhetoric people have one idea of what it is and it's really not the case at all and I, I guess I'm hoping that my I'm on the same track with learning this more about propaganda um, especially uh, surrounding an issue near and dear to my heart with animal rights I think there's a lot of I'd like to just sort of be able to have a better idea of an, an adult <laughs> conversation about it more so than just kind of um, so yeah, but it, so it ties into my interest in rhetoric and just my interest in wow, in, in wow! I'm so happy to hear that, Mira. And of course, what a great opportunity for you to dig into the topic of animal rights propaganda as part of your work this semester. Because if you oh, really? if you choose to do so, you can focus a lot of your work and acquire a, a fair amount of expertise on a topic like that that's hugely controversial and cool. got a lot of different nuances to it. So, so glad yeah. that you are interested in a particular kind of propaganda uh, that's happening now yeah. from uh, at PETA and the cetacean rights people and all kinds of other stakeholders. Really fascinating mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. All right, we're introducing ourselves to each other. Who's next? I can go. Thanks. Uh, so I'm Matt Berard. I am technically in my sixth year at URI. Um, communications major. I used to be a history major, which is why I took this class. Um, I'm really interested in like history and World War II propaganda was like huge. So um, I'm really happy to be here and uh, that's it. Great. We're glad you're here. Who's next? I can go next. Um, I'm Layton. I am a double major in communication studies and public relations. And this last semester, I have an internship, which is full time, plus I have a job and I'm on the cheer team. So I've basically just picked all online classes for the semester. So that's how I ended up here. Nice. Well, we're glad, we're glad you're here. For whatever reason you're here, we're glad you're here. We're, hope, we're glad it fits into your schedule. Who hasn't introduced yourself to us yet? Nicole, Nicole, we can't hear you. Uh, talk, talk some more. Hello? Yeah. You're working. Okay. My name is Nicole Delaney. I'm a senior communication major. Um, and this course says I just don't really know a lot about propaganda, and it sounded um, like it would be fun. All right. We're glad, we're glad you're here. Um, who else has not yet introduced yourself to us? Zoe. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Hi. Hi, everyone. My name is Zoe Wang. I am a PhD student um, in the education program. I'm very much interested in uh, media literacy, uh, contemporary culture, and of course, uh, propaganda is one of the you know, areas that I'm interested in, especially, um, you know, if you know me, I'm from China, um, which is a big state. Um, that is known for its propaganda. It has a whole department of propaganda. Um, yeah, so, um, um, yeah, this semester I'm helping Dr. Hops um, as her teaching assistant um, in this class, and hopefully I'll become your best friend, uh, you know, soon. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're glad you're here, Zoe. Uh, Louisa, I see that you're here. Will you introduce yourself to us, please? Don't hear Louisa. Ah, there she is. Hey, we're introducing ourselves and talking about why we're interested in this class. Louisa. Ah, so your sound is not working very well. So if your sound doesn't work very well, 
Uh, you can try go going out of the uh, website and then coming back in. Usually the second time it really uh, works pretty well. Um, okay, so uh, one of the things that we're going to do in this class is we're going to use our one hour synchronous class meeting to really have a dialogue about some of the topics that we're going to be learning. But really my um, goal in the next um, 50 minutes is to give you an introduction to the course so that you have a good understanding of what the arc of the semester is like, a little bit of clear understanding about what you're expected to do to be successful in this course, and then an immediate understanding of what do you have to do like this week between now and our next class. Um, so I'm going to share my screen with you and I'm going to take you to our web page. If, if you're like me, you might be able to keep uh, your Zoom window open and then also open the website for this class, which is uh, propaganda2017.com. So there's the, what the home page looks like. Um, why don't you guys give me a thumbs up if you were able to access this website? Thumbs up if you got here. Good show. So I'm hoping that you have had a chance to go to About the Course and download, download the syllabus. That's where we should start. Okay. So here I am. There's my contact information. The best way to reach me is on Twitter at Renee Hobbs. There's Zoe's contact information as the teaching assistant. Um, this course hash has a hashtag, and that's COM416, right? So this is a fully online class, which has an optional synchronous video class meeting. Uh, when I asked you guys to tell me what times and dates were best, you overwhelmingly told me that Thursdays from 7 to 8 p.m. is uh, the best time for you. We're really religious about sticking to 60 minutes. So it'll end, it'll start promptly at 7 p.m. It'll end promptly at 8 p.m. Now, if you are unable to participate in the online class, you're gonna find a YouTube video. I'm recording this class session right now. You'll be expected to watch and offer a video comment on the YouTube recording in order to receive credit for class participation. And uh, I will have some more details about that uh, on the YouTube page when I post this uh, tomorrow. So there's the resources for the course website, uh, propaganda2017.com. I'll have my office hour one hour before this class and other times by appointment. So we get that propaganda is on the rise and that it's inescapable. It's in politics, it's in consumer culture, it's in entertainment, it's in leisure. And propaganda has been happening for most of your lifetime in this post 9-11 world. So we've been seeing a rise of terrorism as itself a form of propaganda, sometimes called the propaganda of the deed, right? But social media is creating new forms of propaganda, right? Because that easy sharing and viral spread of ideas makes it possible for us to kind of live in our own little bubbles. Some people have called it a post-truth society, right? Where activists and politicians just make repeated assertions using talking points that are simple and emotionally laden. And this does not contribute to democracy. Some people think that the result has been an increase in polarization and apathy. So that's a topic that we want to interrogate a little bit. But propaganda is not all bad. Propaganda can serve beneficial purposes. And we're gonna look this semester at all the very many ways in which propaganda can be beneficial to sell products and services or ideas to make changes that improve society. Because to tell you the truth, I am a proud propagandist. As an advocate for media literacy education, I communicate propaganda all the time about the benefits of building critical thinking skills about media into the K-12 education system. So I'm a propagandist as well as someone who wants to critically analyze propaganda. 
And you might be a propagandist too, if you're an activist, because the skills of learning how to create propaganda are really important for success in contemporary society. But along with the skills of learning to create propaganda comes the social responsibility needed to use its power wisely. So this semester, we're gonna be thinking a lot about our ethical and social responsibilities as receivers of propaganda and as producers of propaganda, right? Now, it's, the course is designed to support any number of different kinds of careers and professions that involve um, problem identification, research, analysis, synthesis, and creativity. But in particular, you'll have the opportunity to engage in creative work where you get to express ideas through creative multimedia projects. You'll also have the chance to work collaboratively dealing with time, task, and project management and develop your leadership and your collaboration skills. And you'll also have the opportunity to engage in research to understand ideas and gather information through research uh, 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 skills. So these are the nine learning outcomes for the course. Basically, you're gonna gain knowledge, right? And you're gonna strengthen your own skills of critical thinking about propaganda. And you're gonna increase your respect and respect for the diversity of different interpretations about propaganda. You're gonna strengthen research and collaboration skills. You're gonna advance your own communication skills and your creativity through activities that involve interviewing, writing, and media production. You're gonna gain some project management skills, working under deadline pressure to get stuff done. And you're gonna gain skills in using digital tools because this class makes heavy use of digital media. And you'll be reflecting on how media and technologies reshape information, education, and society. So those are the goals. Oh, yeah, oh, forgot the last one, maybe the most important. Gain sensitivity to the ethical responsibilities of being a communicator in the digital age. All right. So um, we're, we're using two books for this class. The first one is called Propaganda, Power and Persuasion. It's by David Welsh. It's a highly, it's a highly illustrated, absolutely fascinating book, not just about the history of propaganda, but also taking us right up to the present era, right? Uh, looking at the, for instance, the Gulf War playing cards featuring Saddam Hussein, right? So contemporary propaganda. And then we're also reading this absolutely marvelous but truly frightening book called, oh, uh, uh, Leighton, don't, don't, be, don't be screen sharing, girl. Let me see if I, ah, there you go, thank you. Uh, yeah, Trust Me, I'm Lying by Ryan Holiday. Ryan Holiday was the PR director for a um, apparel company called American Apparel. You familiar with that brand? And he engaged in all kinds of um, online propaganda until one day he woke up and um, he got kind of disgusted with himself and disgusted with media. And he wrote this like tell-all book, which is incredibly entertaining and informative. And it's going to be the bridge between our past, present, and our future uh, in thinking about propaganda, right? So um, let me share my screen with you. So I'd like you to buy those books uh, right away. That would be a good thing to do. Okay, so now the course design has an educational philosophy that if this is not your style of learning, now would be a good time to drop. So here's what, it's, here's what this course is driven by. It's based on the assumption that you're able to be self-directed and make strategic choices in order to maximize learning opportunities. So you've gotta be a self-directed learner or this class isn't gonna work very well for you. Another key assumption of this class, and you have to believe this or this class won't work for you, is that people learn best by making and doing things. That's how, you, that's how I learn best and that's how most people learn best. You're gonna be making and doing things as a form of learning. And then finally, um, reflection. 
is an essential literacy component activated through social interaction in a challenging and supportive community. It's why we meet like this once a week for an hour, because sometimes the best way to reflect is to do it in a conversation with other people, right? So the learning, this, lear this kind of learning works really well if those three things, those three practices are followed. So the online course basically involves creating this online community where we're gonna use Twitter, face-to-face -face like we're doing now, threaded discussion, and other tools. So you'll be participating in this 60-minute synchronous class, and there, there's gonna be other informal learning assignments as well, that, and they will count as class participation. So creating media is a big part of the course work here. I'll provide in writing a specific description of the assignment, and I'll give you criteria for evaluation, and I'll post those as we go along under assignments. Now, everything that you create for this class will be public because you'll be posting assignments on your blog page and that, that blog page will be public. But the feedback that I give you after each assignment will be private. So I'll send you all your grades and, and feedback on your uh, work through email. And I'll always use the uh, hashtag com 416 so you'll always be able to find it right so because reflection is so important you're going to be doing some reflection reflective writing as part of your course this semester now it's kind of important for me to talk about why we're not using sakai um and i hope you're happy about the fact that we're not using sakai so Here's what I learned about why I gave up using a learning management system like Blackboard or Sakai, right? Um, basically, basically what I learned, oops, hold on here. Basically what I learned is that um, when students use a learning management system like Blackboard or Sakai, over the course of the 12 weeks, they get pretty good at it. Right? They figure out what to do, how to participate, how to use Sakai. But learning Sakai is really a useless skill for life. Learning Sakai just makes you a good student and gets you good at Sakai. So I want learning to transfer directly from the classroom into the real world, the professional world of public relations and media and communication and education. And that means the tools and the things we'll be learning with are all free and open source tools that are really useful in the world outside the classroom. So because I want learning to transfer from the classroom to the real world, we're using only real world tools like this one right here, Zoom, which is a free tool that can be used by anybody for any purpose. You'll be an expert at Zoom. Well, you already are, right? Have you figured out how to use the chat room? Yeah. Open up the chat room and say welcome in the chat room. And that will help learn, that will help you learn. Uh, yeah, there's all those welcomes showing up. So we're not using Sakai, we're using the open internet and that will make the class way more fun and way more educational, right? Okay, so now here's the other thing. You guys have different competencies with technology, right? And maybe I'll do a little test of this right now. Um, so three fingers up if you feel like technology, whoo, I'm all over it. Two fingers, eh, I'm okay. One finger, ah, using technology for this glass. So put up the fingers. Are you a three? All over this technology shit to like kind of with it or like uh. all right i see some twos and i see some threes i'm really happy about that but really it doesn't matter wherever you are in whatever your technology learning is wherever you are you're going to learn and we're going to help each other learn so it's possible that you'll be able to informally help somebody in this class and possibly somebody will be able to help you in this class 
So don't worry too much about your technology skills wherever you are at. Many of the things you're going to use are going to be new to you, but some things you're already familiar with. Okay, so now the course has, this is the assignments part of the course. Ah, this is the assignments part of the course. And after this, I'm going to stop talking. Um, the course has three kinds of assignments, and there they are right there on the page. The LEAP projects are worth 600 points. The reading quizzes are worth 200 points. And the class participation is worth 200 points. So the LEAP projects are media, media projects that are designed to, to strengthen your skills. The first one we're working on is called Propaganda in My Life. And then Critical Analysis of Propaganda. Leap three, you'll be working with a partner to compare and contrast propaganda in the present and in the past. And then you'll be doing some reflective writing at the end, right? So each of these um, assignments will give you some choices where you'll have to use different kind of media, right? You might use different kinds of, you might make a podcast or you might make an infographic uh, or you might make a image slideshow. And there'll be some choices for you about what, how you want to express your learning. Now, because we encounter some powerful ideas from a variety of authors, four times during the semester, you'll have a 48 hour window to complete an open book, open note quiz that checks on your active comprehension of the class readings. So that's an open book, open note quiz for times in the semester, but with very little advance notice, right? A 48 hour window, right? So that'll happen in the 48 hours before the, the class session on Thursday. And then finally, class participation. In general, we're expecting that you're gonna devote about six to nine hours of the, to this course every week. You'll be watching some videos, you'll be reading, and you'll be completing assignments. Um, and there'll be each week a set of tasks that you'll use. And often, I'll ask you to post and share ideas on Twitter using our course hashtag, right? So your class participation grade will reflect the work that you do on these informal activities. Okay, I'm gonna ask you to read the policies um, because I don't really wanna read that, except maybe this one. Because you're going to be creating work for a public audience, that is the world of internet users, you have to decide whether you wanna use existing digital accounts or if you wanna create a new account you have to decide if you want to use a pseudonym or if you want to use your professional identity. Many of you are graduating seniors, and in fact, I think the portfolio of things you create for this class would be good to represent your competencies, especially if you're thinking about being a public relations or communications professional. Um, but you're free to decide whether you want to create a, a public identity or create a, essentially a private identity using a pseudonym. Okay, enough said for the moment. Let's see what questions you have. What questions do you have about this class? Okay, so does that mean you guys have no questions? Face is really close to us. Okay, so here's what I'd like to do next. I'm going to share my screen. Let's do some viewing and discussion, shall we? Right. So I'm going back to the main page. Uh, here I am at um, week one. Let's see. Let's take a look at. Um, let's take a look at. Trust me, I'm lying. This is the this is the video. Oh, I don't know if I, I I'm not sure if this is going to work. Yeah, this is the video about the book that we're going to read. Let's take a look. Publicity control what you think you know. I'm going to start it from the internet is full of liars, cheats, 
sent charlatans who want only one thing, your attention. Age views and publicity control what you think you know. Stories on the internet and news on TV. The system is completely defenseless. Manipulators like me spread lies and generate fake outrage daily. If you were interested in the manipulation, here's one way. Start small. Send your story to a tiny personal blog from an alias email. They get an exclusive, you get an outlet. You then take that exclusive link and send another fake email to an even larger site. Like links in a chain, you move your story along to larger and more influential sites. The original idea builds momentum with each link to a point. Your story becomes a story. This is one way unreal news becomes reality. This information is dangerous. It's up to you. My name is Ryan. Trust me. But I, um, I think uh, not everyone can see the video. Oh, no. No. Is that true? Can, Does it, can anyone see it? Can we see that video? Thumbs up if you could see the video. We, I can't see it. Ah. Okay. So um, I'm playing that video. Now, now that helps me learn that I probably want to have you guys watch the videos uh, essentially independently and not through my screen, right? So let's do, let's have a discussion about this one. Okay, so at this point, I would like you to go to the website and click on the link that says fake news wasn't the biggest problem. It's only four minutes long. We're gonna watch it for four minutes and then we'll come back together and talk about it, okay? As you watch, I'd like you to see if you can identify what are the most interesting ideas from your point of view. All right, give me a, give me a thumbs up if you understand what we're doing next. We're watching that four minute video called Fake News Isn't the Problem. You're giving me a thumbs up if you know what we're doing. Okay, and we'll come back together as a group in about four minutes. See you in a bit. Because the big money was in advertising. If you're trying to make people think, you know, this expensive watch, these kind of clothes will make you seem like a savvy, cool person. Advertising in a fake news publication, it, it doesn't meet any of those objectives. What is new are the incentives of the internet. A lot of advertisement these days is served by remote computer algorithms. And they know who you are because they've been tracking your web browsing, but they don't care what site you're on. And within Facebook, it can be hard to tell where a story is coming from. And the way that's presented, you don't have a strong sense of what is the brand and what is their reputation. So fake news can zoom around Facebook faster than anything before. It can make money, and people might not know if it's coming from a credible source. And fake news was definitely rampant during the 2016 presidential election. One BuzzFeed News report found that the top fake news articles on Facebook were either pro-Trump or anti-Hillary, which makes fake news a convenient target for liberals who are upset about the election results. And also that a lot of people in journalism see the world taking a disturbing turn, and they would like to believe that fake news is the reason. While established media outlets are brands built on accuracy, rogue websites, some masquerading as legitimate, are reporting misinformation. But when you look at it, as best we can tell, the kinds of things that really hurt Hillary Clinton in the campaign were true stories. Gallup asked voters what they'd read, seen, or heard about Hillary Clinton, and they found that stories about Clinton's email dominated throughout the campaign. Network television news devoted more minutes of total airtime to covering Hillary Clinton's email server than to all policy issues combined, and it wasn't even close. 
Clinton violated security guidelines when she used a private email server. The Hillary Clinton camp back under the cloud of the email controversy. Thousands of emails under the microscope. Clinton's email scandal is back in the spotlight. I think a big problem you see is that the way media outlets like to think about a campaign is, well, you have two candidates out there, you have a team of reporters, so you divide up your team. Reporters are smart, they want to be adversarial. So the upshot is that you naturally end up with the result that both candidates are pretty similar because you have similar numbers of people writing similar numbers of investigative stories about both of them. So if it turns out that there's sort of two big knocks on Hillary Clinton, her emails and her foundation, you get a lot of stories about each of those subjects. And if it turns out that there's a million knocks against Donald Trump, each story winds up getting less coverage because you only have a certain amount of Donald Trump space. This is called false equivalence, and you can see some evidence of this in the Gallup data. Emails consistently are at the top for Clinton, with Trump stories shifting around. Facebook is finally beginning to fight back by partnering with proven fact-checking organizations. But don't expect this to fix everything. If you think the media did a bad job, which I do, I think that the bad job that was done was it was a lack of perspective. Many voters are making a lesser of two evils assessment right now. You have two flawed candidates this year. Which one can you tolerate the most? Scandals surround both campaigns. Both candidates are facing serious trust issues. Real news, very mainstream outlets did not present the stakes well. I think that means that a lot of people went into this election not really understanding what was at stake. Okay, you guys should be done with watching that video. Give me a thumbs up if you're done. Good show. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do next. I'm going to um, I'm gonna break you up into small teams and I'm going to ask you to introduce yourself to your partner or partners. And I'm gonna ask you to identify in, in discussion, what were the most interesting things that this video emphasized, okay? So you're gonna be getting a message from me just a little bit uh, later that uh, you're gonna be uh, kind of coming into a breakout room. Uh, so here you go. Breakout rooms are open. Go hang out in your breakout room, introduce yourself to your partner and talk over the most interesting ideas that you encountered in that video. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. Sorry. I'm just not sure if the other two people are here. What room are you in? I have I have no idea. What's your name? Huh? What's your name? Francesca. Francesca, how come you didn't get assigned to a, bre a, br a breakout room? That means just you and I are just going to have to chat, okay? Okay. <laughs> so what did you think were the most interesting uh, uh, ideas from that video that we just watched? Um, I thought that the, the stuff, like the recent stuff was really interesting, how they were uh, talking about like Trump and Hillary. Was I, yeah. Like, I think that's really fascinating because it's like, it's so present, our, um, like the propaganda around us, very current issue. So I thought that was cool. Yeah, for me, I was really intrigued about that idea they called false equivalence. The idea that whenever we heard about Clinton, it was always the emails, the emails, the emails, or the foundation. But when we heard about Trump, it was like his taxes, his uh his bankruptcies his not giving up uh you know not giving up uh 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 uh, uh 
power uh, to his uh, to to a blind trust. Uh, it was his birther controversy. It was a whole bunch of different things. And so that idea was, in a way, maybe the uh, uh, the type of content that got emphasized. We heard over and over just one of two things from Clinton, but we heard like 10 different things from on the Trump front. So that idea was really intriguing to me and I liked the way they illustrated it as well. I thought the way they illustrated it made it mm, like visible, easier yeah. to follow. Yeah. There you, yep. Um, I wonder like how they perceive like uh how that affected like how it affects her now for the future like if she can come back from the type of stuff that was like shown in the media because i people don't think she's gonna like reappear but i mean she was at the inauguration and all of that like and she looked fine so and even the media like portrayed her like looking fine at the inauguration so i'm curious to see like where she goes, it like will, how the media It will her. be interesting to see if this is the kind of thing you can recover from or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's been fascinating to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I was really intrigued about one thing that the video tried to do in the early part of the video is talk about how propaganda kind of follows you around the internet depending on what you type in, what you're interested in. Mm -hmm. Does that happen to you when you're online? Do you get customized propaganda based on stuff that you've bought or searched for or whatever yes definitely it's like super creepy in my opinion like i don't i know that it's also but sometimes i feel like me and my friends always talk about how we think our, the phones like listen to us because like we'll be talking about something and it'll like come up on like my name francesca there's a store called francesca's and so my friend will always like when she talks to me it'll always pop up on her phone now and it's like it's just weird so wow. are yeah. you using, are you using google chat or are you um using, how are you talking are you talking through a phone like, are you talking no so we'll be talking in person and she'll use my name and stuff and then it will she'll get ads for francesca's on her phone super weird yes, so creepy <laughs> yeah <laughs> so yeah so that's me all over the place we, we, that, that might be something to investigate a little bit, the relationship between propaganda and surveillance. Yeah. Interesting topic. Yes. Interesting topic. So, yikes. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, it could not be a thing, but I think it, I believe it is. <laughs> it might be. Yeah. It might be. Yeah. I know that if you're using uh, the Google products, they, they are tracking. Right? So I know that. Yeah. If you're using Google products are definitely uh, paying attention to that. But I don't know, mm -hmm. if, I don't know if other forms of uh, other forms of media, whether they're tracking you that way or not. Yeah. So people are coming back from the breakout room. Okay. Now let's see, it looks like almost everybody is back, right? Almost everybody is back. Okay. okay. All right. So so you so you got a chance to get acquainted with somebody in class and think a little bit about the way in which uh, fake news happened in the, um, in the uh, election cycle. Now, I, I want to now call your attention to the tool that we just, uh, the tool that we just used to watch this video. We watched this video using a um, video sharing tool called Video Ant. And one of the assignments that you're going to have for this week is to comment on this video. And I'm going to show you how that's done, right? So I'll go, I'll go back to the beginning of this video. Clinton. It was a, another story in which Hillary Clinton was supposed to have. I just love that picture of the alien baby. I press this button right here. You guys don't see this on your uh, machine because you haven't logged in and gotten an account. With video ant so you have to come up here where it says uh who are you and you have to get an account but now you can make a comment on the video here and i'm gonna remember i remember this headline 
because I also had a baby in 1993, right? So we're going to engage in commenting on this video as we watch it, right? So um, that um, tool, using the video ant for video commenting, is going to be pretty helpful for us as we uh, move through the as we move through the semester. Now I'm going back to the website, and now because it's about I only have about 15 minutes, I want to talk with you about how you can prepare for um, how you can prepare for class next week. Uh, we've done almost everything we were supposed to do here. Uh, we've viewed and discussed that fake news uh, article. We've looked at the syllabus, including the learning outcomes. We haven't yet reviewed the content of the course. Okay, we haven't yet done that. In fact, I haven't even shown you that. But um, I believe that if you go to the syllabus, I believe if you go to the syllabus and you go all the way down to the bottom, you're going to see essentially a kind of week by week schedule with the topics and the ideas. So notice next week, defining propaganda. The week after that, understanding virality. The week after that, promotion and marketing as propaganda. And then beneficial propaganda. The propaganda of nation building, war propaganda, propaganda in the 20th century, fake news, demagoguery, and the alt-right, terrorism as propaganda, Chinese propaganda and censorship, Russian propaganda, education, propaganda, and democracy. So do take a, do take a look through the, through the whole uh, uh, course. And our next class is going to be Thursday, next Thursday, February 2nd, from 7 to 8 o'clock. If the course, um, if this session was successful, you should be able to answer these questions. You should be able to explain what is an open network learning environment and why are we not using Sakai. You should be able to define what the term propaganda means to you. You should have uh, be able to answer the question, what do you need to do to be successful in this course? And you should have been, you should be thinking about how this course can benefit you, right? That, those would be good things to be thinking about right now. Okay, so let's take a look at what you should do before, uh, before next class. And hold on just a second here. I want to go back to the main page. I haven't really shown you how to navigate around, but you're going to discover that uh, everything that's on the syllabus is also on the website. Right, so there's a lot of redundancy built in, and when you want to go back up to the top, that's it. But we're we're working on week one, and week one's going to have really everything you need to do to be successful uh, for next week's class. So please complete these activities before Thursday, February second at seven p.m. First, take a tour of our moot discussion board. Right, that will, if you haven't used the Moot discussion board before, you can establish an account. Do not create a community, just establish an account and read a little bit about what that discussion board is. Then on the page marked, who are you? Introduce yourself. And here are the prompt questions. In making your written introduction, consider responding to some of these questions. You can choose which ones you wanna to respond to. What's your personal definition of propaganda? How is propaganda related to other terms you might be familiar with, including rhetoric, persuasion, or influence? Learning, did you ever learn about propaganda in middle school or high school? What do you remember learning? And then, have you ever created propaganda? If so, describe what you created and for what purpose. Was your propaganda effective? Why or why not? And then finally, remembering. Can you remember a powerful form of beneficial or harmful propaganda that you experienced when you were younger? Describe what you remember about the experience of reading it or viewing it. So you'll post by simply hitting the reply button and typing there, right? So that's like a threaded discussion. Um, I had a question about that. I couldn't find figure out how to, um 
make the account without making a community. Oh yeah. So I, I made a link that's a little bit better now. Oh, okay. Perfect. It's that one. Right. Okay. I realized that the other link that I shared didn't have a good, wasn't clear, but this one simply says log in with Facebook. Okay. I think I fixed that. So thanks for asking that question. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Now, the next thing is, um, we, uh, we did watch the fake news isn't a problem. I want you to practice making annotation using that video annotation tool. Now, the most interesting thing we're doing this week is we're watching an amazingly hilarious comedy called Look Who's Back on Netflix. And this, um, this, um, this, uh, this assignment asks you to go to Netflix and watch this film. Here's the trailer just to give you a sense of what this thing is about, because this thing is gonna rock your world, it's so funny. Can you guys see the video? For months on the bestseller list. Under what name shall we enter your email? Under mine, of course, Adolf Hitler. Excuse me for the inquiry, but for real? No, surely my name is not quite like that. My real name is Shmuel Rosenwig. Very well, Mr. Shmuel. Is that Adolf, Adolf Hitler's already taken. Someone here owns my name? How about you take another name? Nehmen Sie die neue Reichskanzlei. Die ja, ich immer noch Like a new Hey, who controls everything here? When there is no propaganda ministry anymore? No, this runs by a pretty ungoverned network, my Führer. Good to know. Okay, so, um, Look Who's Back is a hilarious comedy about um, what happens when Hitler comes back into the 21st century Germany and his encounters with the media industry. Um, it's hilarious and really disturbing, right? And it's a good way for us to start the semester because it's hilarious and disturbing. So here's what I want you to do. Uh, what I'd like you to do is view, look who's back on Netflix. After viewing, comment on the film's messages about propaganda and contemporary media using the Flipgrid. Comment and respond to at least one peer. Consider these questions in your response. Describe a favorite scene in the film and explain why you liked it. Why did media producers promote Hitler? And how did you interpret the ending of the film? Why did the director include that? We're using a tool called Flipgrid. Flipgrid doesn't require any login or any sign in. You just click on that um, button and you get here. And now make a comment on the film. What are the film's core messages about propaganda and contemporary media? So you click on the green button. You, you hit the record button and you record your video commentary here. And then you can also see each other's and comment on each other's. It's a really cool asynchronous tool. Do it anytime between now and our next class. So um, Look Who's Black is a major, major part of our reading for this week. I'm also gonna ask you to do some uh, print reading. Those readings are down below. The assigned readings here for week two are all clickable links. Chapter one, what is propaganda? Click and the link opens. An article I wrote with a grad student here from URI, Sandy McGee, in the communication studies department, teaching about propaganda, an examination of the roots of media literacy. And then uh, this one, what is propaganda and where to find it? And then if your book has shown up, if your book has shown up, chapter one, a much maligned and misunderstood term in our propaganda book. So for, for after, after reading these short pieces, what I'd like you to do is compose a comment where you summarize and comment on some of those key ideas. Finally, or next to finally, I'd like you to create a Twitter account and post a message using the class hashtag COM416. 
You can use search terms like propaganda, public relations, disinformation, uh, any, any, any kind of terms, and find at least 20 interesting people to follow, including me. And then the last thing that you should be doing is creating a blog for this course because you'll be putting your first written assignment on your blog. If you already have a blog, you can just make a, a special page or set of pages for this class. Um, but what I'd like you to do is send a tweet to the instructor with the hashtag COM16 plus the link to your blog's homepage before next Thursday at 7 p.m. Here's why. I'm going to link all of your blogs up here to the class roster so that when we see your name, I'll be able to click here and I'll get to Alyssa's blog. I'll click here and I'll get to Taylor's blog. But to do that, you have to send me the link to the blog. And if you send that to me in Twitter, I'll also have your Twitter hashtag, which will be awesome. Okay, so basically, um, that's what you have to do to be ready for our next class, Thursday, February 2nd at 7 p.m. What questions do, do you have before I let you go? Um, it looks like the course website is uh, e using WordPress. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. um, do you, are we, if t in order to do the linking, do we stick with WordPress or is we like Weebly okay? You can use Weebly or okay. we use anything you want and just okay. send me the link. So whatever is easiest for you, use. Okay, thank you. Yeah, good question. Who has another question? Do anyone, uh, do everyone have the access for Netflix? Can you build it on Netflix? Yeah. So, okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we all have access to Netflix. That's good. Um, anybody at help? Any other questions? Okay. All right. So thank you for hanging with me uh, uh, to uh, to the end of this class. We'll we'll say goodbye with the live long and prosper sign. Live long and prosper. Go ahead. Oh, look how good you are at that. Very impressive, ladies and gentlemen. We'll see you next week, 7 o'clock, February 2nd. Have fun. Remember, if you need to reach me, the best way to do it, Twitter. All right. Talk to you next week. Bye-bye.